Hello and welcome at the Power BI Summit. My name is Martin Kratke. I'm the CEO of Acaris, and I'm super excited to be part of this event and show you a few cool things. First things first, a huge thank you to Reza, Leila, and their team for putting this event together. We are very proud to, to support this fantastic initiative. And finally, my team and I are also wishing Leila all the best for her recovery. She's not just one of the most knowledgeable experts on AI, Azure and Power BI, but also one of the most kind and helpful people in the Power BI community that we know. So Leila, all the best from our team. We know you'll beat this. Uh, initially, just a quick introduction of Ectaris. Um, we specialize in add-on solution around the Power BI ecosystem, particularly around extended planning and analytics, master data management, and synchronization of um, Power BI data. We work with some of the largest organizations in the world. We have some tremendous feedback by industry analysts, uh, software reviews, and among others, we were just voted the best enterprise uh, performance management solution in 2023. And recently also among the champions uh, in that space by another software review platform. I'm particularly proud to hear about the emotional relationship that we have with our customers. 95% 90, of our customers have a very good relationship with us and also want to renew their subscriptions with us. So we are very proud that we are providing value for them. So what is it that we're actually doing uh, for our customers? We help them to get started with Power BI models on the major software as a service platforms really in minutes. So for example, for accounting systems, billing systems, um, CRM systems, we provide end-to-end -end solutions that include the data warehouse, so automating the data loads from their software as a service platform and then providing the reports and the ability to plan and write back uh, really uh, as an end-to-end -end solution out of the box. Um, the other aspect that we're covering is that uh, we, of course, covering the automation of the data model, we're covering the Power BI reports, but then we're also adding planning capabilities with eight Power BI visuals that cover planning and financial reporting but then do the same thing also in Excel. We know Excel is still the most widely used software application in the world. So we have a very powerful integration with Excel that allows you again to read and write from the central data models. And this also works in the web browser. So it works on any platform, be it um, Apple, uh, Linux and so on, because the only thing that you need is a, is a web browser. And it also works directly integrated in Power BI, which means you have the flexibility of Excel combined with the analytical capabilities in Power BI. As you've just seen, so our focus on empowering the end user, making it as easy as possible to get started really in minutes with uh, cloud-based deployment, but equally if you want to as a hosted platform. And then the final thing is doing this as smart as possible. So to provide the planning logic uh, as a best practice uh, template, for example, the connection between sales, uh, finance, HR, CapEx, and a lot of other aspects of the planning process. And then also uh, a very strong focus on AI and machine learning. So we've just uh, launched the first chat GPT integration for Power BI. I'll show you a little bit more in um, a few minutes. So here you can see now a so here you can see now a quick overview of our offering. So on the one hand, the end-to-end -end solution for a specific software as a service platforms. On the other hand, our extended planning analytics suite that covers everything from the initial data model creation, hosting the data model, typically a data warehouse, and then providing the front-end side reports, dashboards, planning forms, master data management. On the front end side, either integrated into Power BI or in Excel, but we also offer an API that you can link this even into your own solutions. Finally, the most important point, what's uh, in it for our users and customers. And here this reflects a little bit uh, our position as the number one in regards to plan to renew the solution because it adds value. So the first example that I quickly wanted to cover here is one of the largest sports groups in the world. 
they were using a specialized uh, legacy CPM solution for a very complex planning process that involves um, factories, uh, nearly a million products, um, a lot of sales teams and marketing teams. And getting this all together uh, was a very complex process in a specialized solution that's also pretty expensive. The strategic priority of this company was to move the power and they were looking to replace this legacy solution and have everything included in the Power BI environment. And so they came across uh, Actaris and nearly entirely built their planning process in-house. So there was no expensive outside consultancy in involved. They had the expertise around Power BI in-house and as Actaris is really built on Power BI with uh, the other technologies they were, that are the standard in this group, uh, Azure Storage, in particular SQL Server. Um, they built all this in house and built a, a very complex, uh, complex planning process themselves with the outcome that they had uh, seven figure savings, uh, much better collaboration, much better insight analytics than before. The next example is a large uh, German beverage group with revenues uh, around 25 billion and 83,000 employees. They were starting a project with another solution that's also uh, providing um, planning with Power Bear. That project didn't uh, succeed. And so they started a project with Actaris and within two weeks, they had a running solution that, and it really redefined their financial reporting. It's deployed as a hybrid solution. So the database is owned by them and Actaris provides the cloud application with uh, some quite dramatic uh, process savings of 80% in regards to how long the, the process takes and the, the cost involved. The next um, customer example is one of the largest US residential developers of land. They were in the typical Excel hell situation, very complex planning processes, forecasting, and they moved to a weekly from before a monthly forecasting process that uh, completely removed the need of Excel because everything is um, running within Power BI. There were a lot of benefits that um, errors were reduced in the process because there were validations that are in the Actaris visuals that ensure that the information is entered correctly and then also visual cues that the data that uh, is entered is correct, which uh, significantly improved the, the, the planning process. And then the final example is uh, a large uh, US energy provider with uh, also revenues in the billions, 5,000 employees. This is a quite interesting example because this is a little bit different than uh, the typical situations that, that typically uh, revolve around uh, all aspects of planning. In this case, it was again replacing a legacy system, but for leak detection. So to efficiently gather information around leak detections, gas leak detection, handle the, the collaboration in the process, you know, particularly around the specific um, KPIs and status indicators, but, but also the collaboration like comments. And so again, the solution runs entirely within Power BI. And here we can really say that this is a solution that is uh, designed to save lives. and running completely in the cloud also implemented in less than a than a month so these were just examples of the outcomes that a few of our customers have let's have a look now at how this all looks uh, in reality with some hopefully quite interesting practical demonstrations so here we see now the actaris interface um, our actaris modeler where you can now manage all aspects so the integration of the source systems, but then also generically the maintenance of your model. For example, if I click on the apps, these are our end-to-end -end solutions. I can see now here all of the solutions that we support. For example, NetSuite, and the integration is really as easy as that. So you just click on add, add your NetSuite credentials, and then we automatically generate the data model plus the Power BI report. So here you see now a sample of our Actaris app, so the ready-made application for NetSuite, the Oracle ERP system. 
And that's what the user gets. So they get now the opportunity to navigate between different areas. They can filter, obviously, they have all the Power BI functionality there. They can do profit and loss analysis with our visuals. It's one of our eight custom visuals, which allows you to build your own subtotal calculations. You have the option to switch between different variance displays, absolute, relative, and waterfall. You can obviously uh, draw up and draw down in the report and everything um, will interact. And we have then a variety of other reports that, are, that come out of the box that cover the typical financial requirements. And all this is obviously completely editable. So if I switch here to edit mode, I can see now all the data model components and I can edit this like any other Power BI report. So this is uh, the the end-to-end -end solutions if you're interested uh, just go to App Source and search for carries. You will see it in all our visuals and the solutions that we have for particular software as a service systems. And to get started is really only a two minute process where you sign up uh, in an enterprise grade uh, cloud application. The system will generate everything for you um, based on Azure. So we store all the data in Azure. And then you get the software as a service modeler where you can control everything. So like you've just seen either completely pre-configured for particular source systems or generic for any source. And the generic integration works now in different ways. We either provide this directly from Power BI. So here you can see, for example, the integration for Microsoft uh, Dynamics. So we have the Dynamics data model that they're using here in this Power BI example, get these integrations automatically with Dynamics. But this also works with any other source in Power BI. So anything that you can do and use in Power BI, or that you can store in Power BI, you can immediately write the name with Actaris. And the only thing it takes is a external tool, Actaris Power Sync, which looks like this. So you have the dialog here. You can either now connect to a Power BI service model or you can connect to the Power BI desktop. I'm using here the desktop. I can now fetch the existing tables and I can see all my tables of the model. And then you can just um, automatically add and write enable any table in Power BI. And the only thing um, that it takes is um, you just fetch some sample data and then you can link it as an Acaris dimension, which means the structure, the dimension tables, or you can load the data into what we call an Acaris cube, which is the data table. And these are then fully editable. So once we've added the tables that we want to write enable, we have them in our Power BI model. So of course we don't want to directly change the data in the source system. We're just adding a write back table and all the right back happens into that. And then you can combine the source table. So in our case, for example, the dynamics data directly from the ARP with the right back table. So if we look at the visual here, we've just taken the actuals from the dynamics table and then added the budget from the right back table. And then you can immediately do your planning. So you say, okay, I would like to simulate if our revenue goes down to 46 million and if our expenses go up and then I could also drill down here into more detailed levels so you can do the planning directly on the chart or you can use the other seven Ectaris visuals. So for example, Ectaris matrix. So here you have now the option to do the write back in a matrix style. As you can see also selectively as so I've just expanded the revenue without the other ones, which you normally can't do in the Power BI visuals. Same applies for the column visual. And then I have all the options available that Actaris provides from relative increases, adding data, pasting data from Excel, using existing allocations, filling to the right, and so on. So uh, I have now all the options here to edit this. Uh, I can use shortcuts as well. So for example, if I want to continue a particular value until the end of the period, I can just click here, use the shortcut R, uh, put in, for example, 20,000, and see now that this gets written forward until the end of the period. So this was a, a simple example of how you can add 
data directly from Power BI in addition to the option from the Actaris modeler where you have the automated solutions for ERP systems and the option also then to manually maintain this. In Power BI Sync, you also have now the option to automate all this. So the update of the model components that you have in Power BI that you want to write enable, you can automate this and update the data from the source system at a given interval. And you also have the option to do PDF reporting. So you can publish PDF reports of your Power BI environments with using filters to any email user that don't require a Power BI license. So let's have a look now at more advanced examples of integrated planning applications directly in Power BI. So here we see now an example of an integrated planning and analytics application, or what's also referred to as extended planning and analytics XPNA. So this is a generic uh, template that uh, can be customized to exactly your requirements where we give you the logic and workflows for nearly all aspects of planning. So for example, here we have financial planning, sales planning, operational planning, driver-based, capital expenditure, HR planning, and master data management, and even those can be further extended. So here we see an overview of the executive dashboard as a user here can switch between different views. So for example, KPI and workflow status. So here I can see now the workflow status uh, as an overall percentage of how are my planning activities going. So here we can see the different plans for the different subsidiaries of the company, where they are if they have been submitted, and also a link to the related forms. And then I can see it also broken down by the particular plan. And from here, I can then directly jump into a planning area, for example, the sales plan. And here I get now an overview initially of the analytics. As we know, planning is nothing without analytics. Uh, if you want to do a proper plan, you need to know what's going on. You need to understand your business and you want to develop a plan based on this. So that's also our reasoning why we are integrating the planning into Power BI and Excel, the most widely used analytics tools. So here I get now a nice overview of uh, the existing situation. So I see the current results against plan using small multiples where I can switch between different plan views. So I can either view this by territory or by sales manager and I get a nice breakdown of what the results are and they're immediately comparable with all the Power BI features. So if I click on a bar here, I can see that everything adapts to this particular selected scenario. So all the power of Power BI. And then we can also see the financial situation. And this is using the Acaris reporting visual, which gives you unparalleled option for creating financial reports. So here uh, I can draw down to particular detail items I have flexible subtotal calculations that you can easily add like you would in Excel. So you just go into edit mode, add a new calculation, and these are calculated extremely fast. So if you try to do the same thing um, in DAX, then this will likely be on the one hand quite complicated to realize. On the other hand, it will take a long time to process, whereas these subtotal calculations process extremely quickly. So we had examples where people were using DAX calculation, it took a few minutes, and with our visual, it came down to a few seconds. So I see at the moment, I'm at 34% compared to the forecast, and let's do a typical simulation. So I can switch in now to edit mode, and here I see now a uh, planning matrix, but let's, before that, go into the scenario management, where I have now both, I have my data entry matrix and the option to immediately adapt my data model and add, for example, new scenarios to the model. And for example, in our case, we could add now a chat GPT version. And we can do this by simply clicking on the plus here, putting in the, putting in the name of the scenario. And then the next step is just to copy our forecast in this new scenario, because we don't want to affect our forecast. We want to do some simulations with the new scenario. So we just go here, 
add in a condition for copying uh, scenarios and this could be not anything in the data model so we could copy from any detail to any other detail so in our case we want to copy from forecast to chat gpt our new empty scenario and we just start the copy process by clicking the button here so now we see the data is copied now we can do our planning let's go back to the full screen So here we've got another full screen view and we see our forecast scenario. Well, let's switch to the chat GPT scenario. And we see now we've got the same data here. This didn't look very exciting, but you have to keep in mind, we have a massive model here that goes down to product, goes down to uh, the customers that has a lot of scenarios, time details. And um, so a lot of data had to be moved. Uh, so in this case, it's a few hundred thousand data points. And this is really the, the power of the Ecteris engine. At the moment, there is nothing like it. We know there's a few vendors out there that claim you can do planning in a visual, but to be very honest, it is impossible if you're looking at more serious applications because a visual just can't handle this. So you need the proper engine in the background. And this is what Ecteris provides. And I'll show you a little bit, no, a little bit more of the power. So if we now go to the total here, we see we have 44.6 million and now we want to do our reforecast. And this can now be supported by the latest AI and that's ChatGPT. So let's just do that. And so if you click this button here, we see we've opened up a really brand new Actaris visual. That's the ChatGPT visual, which gives you ChatGPT functionality directly in Power BI. So we could ask here now a question what is the growth rate for bicycle sales and see what chat GPT comes back to us. So we see the growth rate for bicycle sales varies greatly, but overall we're at 4.9%. Cool. Let's just take that and put this now into our visual. So just say here, we want a relative increase of 4.9%. We see now that it has gone up to 46.76. Let's keep that. So you saw how quick this was. This was seconds, but you have to keep in mind this modified hundreds of thousands of data points because this has to be now correct down to the lowest details. So if I drill down here to a particular uh, sales region and the particular product, this is all there. So this change was applied down to the single record detail. So this was pretty good. Let's see now at the financial implications of this. So, and here we can see now the financial implications. We had a EBIT percentage of 33% with our forecast scenario. Let's switch this to the JET GPT. We see this has gone up to 41%. And now let's see what does that mean for our projection. Let's say we want to switch this now to August. We can now just switch this here. So now we have eight as the cutoff period and we immediately see this will bring our total year projection under the JET GPT scenario to 45.5 million, which is uh, just a little below uh, our target and that's the projection for all. The final scenario that I quickly want to cover with you now is Excel. So we know as good as this all is, in some cases you want the flexibility. And this is what I quickly want to show you here. So if I switch to my workspace now, I can see I have here now a Excel workbook. Let's just open that. So here I have now a normal Excel document. And keep in mind, we are still in the browser here. This will work on a uh, Apple Mac on Linux equally, but it is not a normal Excel document um, because the data here is linked to our Power BI model and I can interact with the model in quite unique ways. So for example, one of the options is here, I can do a drill down. So I can just drill down to my data and this will dynamically show me the correct breakdown of my revenues. And I have obviously all the elements that Excel offers from dynamic formatting, 
uh, subtotals is just a calculation in Excel, spark lines, and my own calculations here. But as you can see, this all stays intact. So you have full flexibility, but your data is always coming correctly because it's coming from the central model. If you want to add now a new calculation here, I can just insert a row and say I would like to calculate a total, like the gross margin, and the gross margin is this plus this. So I have this calculation immediately here, obviously with all the formatting options, so if you want to have an underline here, I can just add this here as well. So you have the total flexibility of Excel, but a completely dynamic model. So if I, for example, right-click here now, and select a new year, so we want to switch this to 2021, and I want to update the, the grid structure, we see here now the correct data with all the functionalities including the option to comment and drill through. So here I see now the results of the drill through, where I can immediately see the transactions that were behind this value. So now you could argue, ah, oh, not that great, because I already have this in the pivot table drill through, but you have to keep in mind this is direct query, and in direct query there is no drill through, so that is quite an important feature. The final thing that I quickly wanted to show you is the option to write back here as well. So for example, if I want to now for a particular scenario change the value here, you can just click on it and put in, for example, I want an increase to 600,000. Have this here. I see this is in red now because this value is now in the queue to get written into the database. So for example, if I look here at the data edits, I can see I've changed this value from this to that. If I if I come to the conclusion this was wrong, I could immediately undo it here as well. And then if I'm happy with it, I can just commit it. And this is written back to the database and I can see the results in real time of my change. And of course, not just for me, but for everyone that's working on this model, even in a completely different system. If this is in Power BI, they will see the correct value. If they look at it from Excel, they will see obviously the same value because this is all in a single version of Truth database. The next thing that I want to show you is the master data management. So I didn't show you this in Power BI, we can also do this in Power BI, but I quickly want to show it to you here as well in Excel. So if I go here to edit dimension, let's say I want to do some changes to my chart of accounts, I can just load this here. And this is built for big data sources. So you saw before we had filters here. So we have customers that are managing millions of products. And as long as you filter them properly, so that you stay within the 1 million row limit in Excel, this will always work. So here I can see now the structure of my chart of accounts. And with all the Excel ease, you can now immediately do my changes here. For example, drag and drop, you see this went red again, because everything that's happening in our world gets logged. So if I look now here at the changes, I can see that we changed the value to assets for these rows and can then immediately publish this back to the central model as well. And all this is obviously guarded by security rights. So every single object from a data point to the dimensions, you can set the user rights. They work in the same way as RLS in Power BI of what the users are allowed to do, if they're allowed to write back, if they're allowed to change it, and so on. So you have complete control. You have an audit trail that everything that was changed is visible, which brings me now really to the final thing, which is a bit more visibility into the audit trail. So here we're now back in Power BI. Now if I click this button here, I can go to the audit trail. And this gives me now a very powerful overview of what has happened. For example, what kind of operations happened in the cube, which is the data model. So we see a lot of splashes, which means entry on uh, aggregates. I can see the dimension changes. So for example, the change in the chart of accounts is here. I can see an overview of who did what, and I can see the detailed changes. So every transaction here, I can filter this obviously by using, I can say, okay, what did Thomas do? And I can see all of Thomas's transaction. So you have, with all the power and flexibility, you need control. And this is what we're exactly giving you here. So this concludes my overview. Sorry that this took a bit longer. Um, if you have any questions, obviously, I'm happy to answer them now in the chat. Alternatively, you can, of course, always go to our website. We have a, a chat function there, or you just um, 
fill out the contact form or initiate a trial where you can trial or our solutions, um, or you can use AppSource, as we already discussed, search for carries, and you will find all our solutions and can immediately and trial them there. But for all the right back, they will require a subscription, so you have to go to our website and start the subscription. So thank you very much, everyone. Enjoy the rest of the conference, and I'm looking forward to potentially speaking with you.